Hello. Uh, good uh, afternoon, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, guests and colleagues. It is uh, our honor to welcome you to the open uh, panel or open uh, uh, forum on the high-level uh, digital high-level panel on digital cooperation. My name is Jovan Kurvalia. I'm uh, the co-lead of the Secretariat of the panel and executive uh, director. And I'm really honored today to uh, be accompanied uh, uh, with um, um, Minister uh, uh, Nikolai Astrup and uh, Kathy Maligan, members of the panel. And we have also Nanjira Samburi connecting uh, from, uh, from uh, Kenya. The main purpose of today's uh, open forum is to brief you about the panel activities to answer most of your questions, I'm sure that there will be, uh, there will be uh, new questions that will be raised during the discussion, to increase the understanding what the uh, panel is um, 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 aimed to achieve, and to hear your inputs how we can proceed uh, with, uh, with our activities. Now, I will start just uh, with, uh, by recapitulating the main uh, information about the panel, and then I will pass the floor to our panelists to uh, brief us about uh, various aspects about panel discussions. The panel was established on 12th of July by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Uh, it is co uh, chaired by uh, Jack Ma and Melinda Gates. It has 22 uh, members. Some of them uh, you know, like uh, Windsurf. Some of them you don't know, and this is uh, the new reality which we are facing in a uh, digital space. Uh, we have um, new members from the communities dealing with uh, blockchain, like uh, Cathy. Uh, we have uh, new members from AI community, from uh, data and, uh, and uh, other spaces where digital issues are addressed uh, these days. And this is one of the underlying message that uh, in addition to the main space, which is the Internet Governance Forum, we have uh, more and more discussions in uh, other policy spaces. If I can just uh, rephrase the famous saying by, uh, by um, uh, John Lennon, digital cooperation is uh, what is happening while we are di discussing digital cooperation. And digital cooperation is happening in many places, in uh, international organizations, uh, in uh, technical uh, associations. And one of the main aims of the panel is to uh, try to connect various dots, to overcome policy silos, to increase the understanding about uh, digital policy. Secretary General asked us uh, to, uh, to act in a, in a humble way, to listen, to uh, engage with communities worldwide, and to avoid the creation of the new bodies or uh, mechanism when it comes to digital, uh, uh, digital cooperation. We have to see how to make uh, existing bodies and mechanisms more efficient. The first meeting of the panel was held in uh, New York at the UN headquarters. The next meeting of the panel will be held in uh, January in Geneva, and the report with recommendation is likely to be issued on, uh, in uh, mid-May uh, 2019. One of the unique features of the panel, and I will close my introduction with that, is that uh, we are trying to engage so-called implementation champions, people who can contribute to our deliberations, who can propose uh, various, uh, various recommendations, and later on work on the implementation of, uh, on those, those recommendations. This is open for the, all communities worldwide. This is also open uh, for our uh, panel members, and it is probably the best introduction to, for, uh, for the Minister of uh, Development of Norway, Nikolai Astrup, who has been uh, taking a few issues uh, which he would like to see uh, being implemented definitely by Norway and uh, other development agencies. Nikolai, please. Well, thank you, uh, Jovan, for um, the introduction. Uh, I'm really honored to be part of this panel. And, um, as Minister of International Development, my starting point is how can we reach sustainable development goals by 2030? Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, digital cooperation is going to be key in order to achieve the SDGs um, and also in accelerating development towards the SDGs and helping us ensure that we can reach them by 2030 and also make it more possible to fulfill our promise of leaving no one behind. So closing the digital gap is going to be very important. Within the panel, I'm co-chairing a working group on inclusive development and capacity building with my colleague, Minister Bogolo Kenavondo from Botswana. And I will use my brief intro today to narrow in on a topic where I see particularly um, strong potential for more collaboration and multi-stakeholder engagement. 
When I look at the international development landscape, some of the initiatives that really stand out in terms of scale and impact are built around digital public good, goods. By digital public goods, I mean digital technologies which can easily be scaled and adapted across countries due to their license, licensing, design, and relevance. Now, Norway is involved in funding and implementing several digital public goods together with international partners. The most prominent is probably the Health Information System program with its accompanying DHIS2 software. This software is today being used in more than 100 countries with a global footprint of 2.3 billion people. The core element behind the success of the Health Information System program is a governed open source approach with a relatively simple generic core software in combination with extensive local adaptation, capacity building, and community building. More than 4,500 people from all over the world have been trained in using DHIS2, and as many as 50 PhD students have graduated within the Health Information System program. Norway is also funding highly scalable and relevant interventions within early grade reading resources, and soon also weather data. But what we are directly involved in is just the tip of the iceberg. During my many international travels, I frequently come across new examples of digital public goods. UNICEF Innovation is working on a platform called Project Connect to improve internet connectivity for schools globally. The World Bank's Identification for Development program is working to scale digital identity systems using the modular open source identification platform, MOSIP. And there are, of course, open source initiatives built and driven by non-development stakeholders, such as the Wik Wikimedia Foundation and the Mozilla Foundation, as well as technologies released under open licenses by large tech companies, such as Google and Facebook. We are, for instance, benefiting from Google's material design in our work on open source early grade reading resources. These are just a few examples of digital public goods. And I, personally, I have no idea how many others exist and how to link them to today's greatest development challenges. And I imagine that this is also the case for many organizations and individuals in the low and middle income countries that could benefit the most from these digital resources. I have therefore initi initiated this uh, multi-stakeholder process to ensure that digital public goods can more easily be created, discovered and used in particular by institutions and, uh, and individuals in low and middle income countries. The aim is initially to develop a prototype for a platform to discover and engage with digital public goods. And I have asked UNICEF Ventures to lead on the prototype giving their, given their relevant experience. The longer term aim is not only to identify the digital public goods that exist, but to attract more investments and uh, community and capacity building in this space. One important reason why more than three billion people are still not online is a lack of perceived relevance and a lack of trust in the internet. I hope that interaction with user-friendly digital public goods, where content is relevant and in languages users know, and where licenses allow for adaptation and even commercial reuse, can help build trust through agency. In defining digital public goods and establishing principles for collaboration built around them, we are leaning heavily on the work led by the high-level panel. And I would like to invite you to join us in this process moving forward. Please let the panel and me know if you are interested in taking part in the digital public goods work as it progresses, and then we will connect you with the UNICEF Ventures team. So thank you, Jovan. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Astrup, thank you, Nikolai, for, uh, for uh, highlighting uh, the, as the various aspects of the approach to the, the digital public goods, and in particular to uh, highlighting the importance of uh, collecting the stories, success stories that exist worldwide in, uh, in this field, and making, making a connect, uh, link to the interplay that uh, this discussion will have with the panel's work, build around values and principles and mechanisms for digital public goods. Um, our next speaker is uh, uh, Cathy uh, Maligan, who is uh, coming, uh, Cathy, if I'm correct, from mainly blockchain community or uh, no. distributed ledger community. And, uh, digital disruption. Di digital disruption, that's a better definition. <laughs> Cathy, please. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, it's also a great privilege to be here and uh, serve on the panel. Uh, I am leading uh, the group that's looking at data. And uh, as everyone here is aware, 
the data is now becoming an extremely critical part of our economy, but it also raises some quite serious issues in the way it gets used. So some of the questions that we are investigating, and we encourage uh, anyone here who would like to join with us um, to contact the panel or myself, um, is uh, what sort of social, legal, economic issues pertaining to data require improved coordination? And what, do those, uh, what does successful coordination look like? And what are those key elements of successful coordination? And how do we work together to uh, deliver on some of these initiatives? Um, secondly, we're also looking at how can privacy, security, and other public interests be ensured while data supporting the development of uh, data-driven technologies. So effectively, how do we ensure the privacy and security of these uh, solutions while ensuring that we also continue to enjoy digital technologies and the economic growth that those bring? Um, and some of the sub-questions we'll be looking at are, uh, you know, what are the best practices in breaking down silos? I think many people who have been involved in government previously have noticed that sharing data across silos is an extremely difficult um, piece of work. And what are the best practices for helping uh, breaking down silos both internally and externally to organisations? But also um, how we can balance the protection of citizens with the need to provide security, for example, or privacy in a continuously emerging digital world. So what are the methods, frameworks and reference points that we have that we can use? Um, and one particular piece, I think, is also to properly address the, a sort of reduction in the hype cycle around technology. When is it appropriate to use it, and when is it actually um, just really um, boys with toys, if I may say so. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cathy. And now we will hear from uh, uh, Nanjira Sambuli, panel member. Uh, she's based in Kenya, and she will connect uh, remotely, I hope technologies in place. Can we hear from Nanjira? Uh, hi, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, perfectly. Please go ahead. Wonderful. Uh, good day to all. Um, I am looking primarily at the topic on human rights and human agency in the digital age, uh, but not as necessarily a standalone, but something that is embedded in all the discussions we are having on the panel and on the topic of digital cooperation. And as has been noted, um, really it is an opportunity with this panel to bring a fresh perspective to this, if you will, age-old problem of how human rights and human agency are actually respected. Um, we are looking specifically at how uh, digital technologies and their developers align their work with the topics of human rights and human agency and the balancing of private rights versus public goods and, and assessing the impact of technologies on human well-being. I'm very keen on making sure that this topic is not considered an afterthought, nor just a punctuation in statements by actors in the digital domain. How human rights and human agency is factored in is something that we are considering in how to emphasize it, right from the design to the implementation and rollout of digital technologies. Um, the importance of accountability by all actors involved in designing technologies is paramount. And as was noted by, in a note by civil society actors to the high level panel, indeed cooperation cannot be code for avoiding accountability and the inevitable conflicts of interest between stakeholders necessary to uphold human rights in the digital age. Now the challenge and the opportunity here not only of enforcing human rights law in digital contexts, um, is that this is primarily a political issue and how we, we stimulate and turbocharge the political will to actually implement and enforce human rights law across the digital domain. And perspectives on how this can or has been done will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nigeria. Uh, we have now, before I open the floor for, the, for your questions and comments, I would like to invite uh, Cengete Masango to, uh, uh, to tell us a few words about interplay between IGF and panel. The IGF uh, is, uh, is very kind to host uh, today's open forum, and there will be quite a few interesting activities where we'll be involving the um, IGF members into uh, providing inputs for the panel deliberation. Cengete, please. 
Uh, thank you very much, Jovan. Yes, uh, the IGF Secretariat and the Secretariat of the High Level Panel on Digital Cooperation, I think we've had a long standing since the beginning um, of cooperation since um, both our offices are based in Geneva, or at least half your office is based in Geneva. So um, we have been helping each other out, Secretariat to Secretariat. And also we've been using our existing IGF um, networks to publicize and help the high level panel connect to stakeholders. This includes the national, regional and youth initiatives for the country level contact and the regional level contact. And also the regional IGF face to face meetings um, like the Asia Pacific meeting. Um, that we've had contact to. And I think, Jovan, you also spoke to the African IGF, correct, the meeting that was held um, at the A African IGF. And at the, um, this IGF uh, 2018 meeting, um, for all the session holders, um, we do have a section f um, from the reports because all session holders are supposed to report back uh, to the IGF Secretariat. So in um, this IGF meeting, we have asked a number of questions um, for each of the issue areas covered uh, during their session, whether it be e-commerce, cybersecurity, AI, um, to provide input um, on issues concerning uh, digital cooperation, for example, what are the values that the digital cooperation should aspire to, what are the principles that digital uh, cooperation should follow. Um, and we'll continue to um, collaborate. And I think also uh, this initiative is also very useful to see how we can improve the IGF. Um, and we're looking forward to the outcome of um, the report. Thank you. Thank you, Cengetai, and uh, we're really honored and pleased to have today with us uh, Mr. Stefan uh, Schweinfest, uh, Director of the United Nations Statistical Division from UNDESA, who has been uh, very, very supportive of our activities. Thank you, Stefan, for joining us. I, uh, I think now uh, we will open the, open the floor for your questions and comments, and uh, this is the best way that we develop uh, further understanding of the panel's activities uh, and also to hear about your expectations and your inputs about, about the panel. The floor is open for uh, both uh, participants here in the room and the remote participants. Well, let's see who is going to be the first. Okay, could you introduce yourself, please? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is uh, Adil Suleiman. I'm with the African Union Commission. Uh, I think at the African Union Commission, we welcome this initiative and uh, we, we have just want to make sure that given the time, the timeline, and this is going to pose uh, uh, some difficulties in terms of achieving uh, a, some more conclusive, inclusive document. So uh, in that context, I would like to hear from you what is being done in terms of uh, consultation with Africa. And uh, we are ready at the African Union Commission to host uh, any sort of uh, workshop uh, to, to, to get some engagement from African member states. Thank you. Thank you. Let us, let us collect a few questions and then we will answer them in benches of three. Another question or comment? Oh. While you're, well, you're uh, preparing your, your comments, let me um, um, answer this question. Ali, it was great to address your meeting, uh, African uh, IGF, last week, uh, which was held in uh, Khartoum. Thank you for your invitation. And uh, that was, that was uh, just one uh, signal to, about the importance of the consultations that we need at the African continent and involvement of African stakeholders. Uh, in addition to general activities, in, uh, engagement activities, which are the online consultations and the discussion, uh, discussion groups, we plan to uh, hold the event in um, Benin on the 15th of January with uh, different stakeholders from African continent. Uh, there are also some uh, discussions about a uh, few other, few other in events in, in Africa, and what you just said is that is fully understood at the panel that there is a need for special efforts to involve African stakeholders in discussions on digital cooperation and digital policy in general. Um, 
uh, stakeholders from uh, definitely governments, uh, civil society, business community, local communities. Therefore, we are looking forward and we will be having a meeting with the African Union Commission and other stakeholders during this IGF in order to plan ad uh, additional activities, in addition to the, this meeting in Benin on 15th of January and the uh, online consultation that we'll have with the stakeholders from Africa. Well, just, just a quick comment also from, from me on this. I think it's ex uh, very important that we have broad consultations, which is uh, what the, the, the panel secretary also, has also, I think, done a good job at um, facilitating that kind of consultation, uh, which we are also engaging in today. Um, and not least from my perspective, I believe that the, the uh, evolving uh, developing countries, and especially countries in Africa, is, is crucial if these countries are to benefit from the huge potential that lies in better uh, digital cooperation uh, as we go along. So, um, so uh, any, any input uh, that the uh, Commission might have uh, would be great on how we can uh, make sure that we have a, a broad uh, uh, consultation process that gives the best possible result. Nikolai Nanjira, do you have any comments on this question, on the possible involvement of African civil society in this process? Yes, absolutely. Um, and as really has been mentioned, um, these consultations and these call-outs for uh, input uh, need to be amplified by all and possible networks, while also factoring that a majority of uh, civil society and citizens may not even be online. So we are trying very hard to make sure that their perspectives are also brought on board. Uh, and so therefore just re-emphasizing that we are willing to listen and we are willing to be pointed to the right direction to interact with people um, on this topic. Thank you, Nanjira. Thomas Schneider, Ambassador Thomas Schneider from Switzerland, please. Thomas. Thank you, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you for coming here. I think it is very important that this panel um, that is far away from some people in, in their perception is coming to the IGF, is engaging in a discussion uh, with the community here present uh, at the IGF uh, to yeah, con convey your views and expectations about what, what the panel uh, is supposed to achieve and also get the feedback of the, of the people here present in order what the ex to, to hear or feel what the expectations are um, on, on the panel, on the work of the panel. <clears throat> With regard to, to, to our government, um, we support the panel. We have always uh, supported it since the beginning because we think that um, it is important that we progress to uh, what you may call a next level of cooperation on, on digital issues. There's already a lot of cooperation going on between different stakeholders. It's not always visible. Um, there are many things that are done that could be replicated or at least others could learn from things that are, that are ongoing, uh, but people just don't know. There are so many meetings and so many, so many different tracks and, and uh, and, and issues that are worked on by so many institutions um, that it's difficult to, to keep track of this. Um, with regard to, to our expectation or our hopes about what the panel could achieve, uh, for us it is less the actual discussions on the substantive issues where cooperation is taking place. What we hope, because this is being, the issues are being discussed in hundreds or probably even thousands of fora by thousands of people that are working on several uh, areas in, in various forms of cooperation. What we hope to achieve is to uh, help us all to have a more, let's say, structured, more visible, more inclusive system of cooperation that the panel may foster and help to, to develop. So in our view, it's uh, given the limited time and the limited resources that this panel has, uh, which is supposed to come up with a report containing some ex uh, recommendations uh, next year in around April, if I, if I get this right. What we would like to, to see the panel focus on is focusing on 
principles and objectives, but mainly on modalities of cooperation based on the experience of hundreds and, and, and thousands of cooperation activities in various fields that are there, that, that we, the panel would try and distill some of the, let's say, success factors or even factors of failure as, as negative uh, experiences that may also help. But in the end, we'll try to focus on how to better shape modalities of cooperation that in the end, the cooperation that is ongoing can be improved, enhanced, made more efficient, uh, so that everybody profits from the resources that are there in various institutions um, and that no one is left behind. So in our view, it's, it is really key to develop some me 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 mechanisms, methodologies, factors um, that could serve as a guideline or as a blueprint or whatever you call it for a next level of cooperation on, on digital issues because we'll have to step up because the opportunities and challenges will be bigger and bigger every year with AI and all the buzzwords that we are uh, that keep us busy. And with regard to, to our experience on, on principles and modalities, what we've experienced is that, for instance, consensus orientation, that you try to take everybody on board, everybody support a particular uh, cooperation activity. Uh, inclusiveness, that all those that are affected, that could seize an opportunity or that may be affected by side effects or don't even know that they are affected by side effects of a particular action, should be brought to the table. So to, to uh, have a system of cooperation that uh, gets everybody on board, gets everybody at the table uh, in an inclusive way, tries to take action on a consensus-oriented basis, action that would allow from some, for some diversity because not uh, one size fits all, as we all know, but that means that you would need to allow for some diversity according to regional difference, cultural differences, and so on and so forth, while keeping activities interoperable in a way that they serve the same goal and do not contradict each other. So these were elements that we hope uh, we would see in, in, in something that could be a blueprint for digital cooperation in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you for, uh, for Swiss uh, financial, political, and intellectual support. You outlined quite a few ideas in this uh, architecture that uh, panel adopted at the first meeting in New York to uh, focus on uh, values that uh, digital cooperation should aspire to, principles that uh, digital cooperation should follow, and mechanism and modalities that digital cooperation should, uh, should use. And you outlined some of the already few principles, inclusiveness, diversity, uh, consensus building as important uh, elements among uh, hundreds if not thousands of digital cooperation examples and mechanisms that we have worldwide from global public good to data to uh, discussion on cyber security and other issues. Therefore, this is one of the, of the panel's uh, um, aims to collect what already exists, what is the wisdom that has been gathered in this space, in IGF space, in other spaces, and to build on this wisdom and to move forward uh, this discussion while having uh, broad support and inclusiveness. We have a yep, question. Okay. Oh, Sandra, please. please go ahead. No. Okay, Sandra Hoferichter from the Eurodic, the European IGF. Um, I just learned that uh, the outcomes will be ready, the recommendations by May or so, and in this respect I'm wondering how will you evaluate your recommendation, how will you revisit them uh, after one year, after two years, what, what it's actually, or how they will be used by the private sector, by the community, etc. I could think that we the national and regional and also the global IGFs are a great forum to look at the outcomes, to revisit them, if the recommendations that you will made is, if, if they are followed, if not, why not, what works, what works not. And I would actually invite you already to the Eurodic um, because this might be the first opportunity to publish these or to get a greater forum to uh, speak about, get input on the recommendations, of course, that's not the time to evaluate them at the moment, but um, a year later or um, two years later, and um, this might probably also help the, the IGF movement to, um, to keep track on a certain process and revisit one topic from one year to the other in terms of intercessional work and, and uh, these things that are under development. Um, I would just like to emphasize that and 
that Euroleague might be a first attempt to uh, represent your recommendations? Sandra, definitely Eurodig is, uh, is both uh, inspiration for some of the mechanisms because as we know Eurodig developed quite a unique mechanisms in building the agenda and inclusion of different actors and also the venue where uh, some of the recomm recommendations could be tested or implemented. Uh, formally speaking, we are going to submit the recommendation in late April, beginning of May to the UN Secretary General. This is what is the for formal requirement. But what we have been hearing from, the, from the, um, uh, Mr. Guterres and the um, other officials involved in this, uh, high officials involved in this process is that uh, we will probably offer this recommendation for the implementation to uh, different stakeholders, in particular stakeholders who contributed to the building of the recommendation uh, during the consultation process. Uh, that's, uh, and Eurodig is definitely one, one for, in addition to the African IGF and uh, other um, uh, regional and national IGF as a place where uh, recommendation could be implemented, tested, revisited in the spirit of agile, agile uh, policy making. This is one of the approaches at the, at the panel that uh, we would like to also promote uh, agile policy making where you can test uh, uh, some solutions, get the feedback uh, and improve the processes further. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chisel and I'm a program lead at Global Partners Digital and I want to thank you for your, um, for this, for organizing this session, but also for in general the commitment to outreach um, that, that you have showed uh, throughout the process. And um, I, I have a few comments um, to make, just drawing on a deliberations or other discussions that a group of more than 10 civil society organizations and academic um, institutions or research institutions um, concluded or discussed yesterday uh, when we were discussing um, how we might contribute to, to the panel's deliberations. And so we would like to take this opportunity to emphasize the following values that we believe should guide digital cooperation and those are transparency, accountability, non-discrimination, equality, diversity, responsiveness and security. And then in terms of the principles that should guide digital cooperation, we would emphasize fair process, a collaborative approach, a bottom-up approach, um, inclusivity and consensus-based uh, decision-making or at least a commitment to empathetic engagement with other communities. Um, one thing that really came up in our discussions is that we, um, we would really urge the panel to consider, refer to and to build on previous relevant initiatives that have alre already emphasized these values and principles and it's encouraging to hear that that's already a commitment that you've made. Um, well, some of the initiatives are, for example, the World Summit on the Information Society, the Net Mundial Initiative, the U United Nations Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights, among others, and we'll be referring to those in our contributions. Um, so lastly, I'd like to say that we would emphasize as well that these values and principles should not only guide digital cooperation, but also the panel's deliberations. Um, so for example, it would be interesting to hear how the panel is intending to ensure transparency and accountability in terms of how the various inputs into the process are reflected in the final report and recommendations. Um, so thank you, and we look forward to engaging in the process going forward. Thank you for the, for the input from the civil society and the research institutions. And you already outlined, in the outlined quite a few concrete suggestions on values, uh, values and principles. Um, uh, we will uh, pass the, this, this comment to the panel members as um, uh, input from our consultation session. And we would like to invite you also to submit your uh, official contribution by, uh, by the end of the month, 30th of November which is the deadline, the first deadline for submission of official uh, contributions, which will constitute the first synthesis report. Uh, synthesis report will be uh, input for the panel members for the January discussion, which will be quite important for shaping the, the first draft of the, of the report. Uh, when it comes to uh, transparency and inclusiveness, uh, this is, uh, this is a pro approach by, by default, except the events like the panel meeting itself, which is, uh, which is uh, held among the panel members. But immediately after the panel meeting, we had a briefing the three or four days after the, the first panel meeting, which we provided information about, uh, about the discussion uh, uh, during the panel session. 
uh, uh, transparency will be also supported by um, official um, of, of, uh, by the um, um, collection of the contribution that will be available at our website. Uh, if the contributor uh, um, agrees, uh, it will be, uh, they will be made uh, public. We also plan to uh, comment and to uh, provide the feedback. Uh, these days, as you know, uh, there are many invi invitations uh, for communities and individuals to have their say. And uh, it could be sometimes uh, frustrating to not to have uh, some sort of feedback. Therefore, we'll put uh, uh, quite reasonable efforts to provide uh, feedback uh, to the, for, uh, for all contributions which are provided in this, this process. When it comes to transparency, we have the uh, town hall meetings. Um, um, I just returned from, uh, from China, where we had three town hall meetings at the universities in, uh, in, uh, in Beijing, Suzhou, and uh, Hangzhou. And uh, we are uh, planning also town hall meetings at the universities uh, worldwide, local communities. And we would like to invite you to, to be part of this, this process. Digital changes uh, are affecting uh, most of us, and we have to move uh, beyond our usual uh, circles uh, and to uh, hear from the other communities what do they think about digital future and digital cooperation. This is the sort of uh, um, uh, summary of, uh, of transparency and inclusiveness aspect of your question, which I would say was um, the most specific, in addition to your excellent contribution about values and principles. Please. Would you like to, Nanjira, uh, uh, would you like to comment on uh, this, uh, this question also, Nikolai and uh, Kathy, please reflect, yes. Well, just a quick comment from my side. Um, I think the, the values and principles that you mentioned uh, are very much in line with our, the thinking of the panel. Uh, we had a, a big discussion about uh, that, those issues uh, at the outset, and uh, I think we all agreed on the, the general um, approach uh, to the panel's work, and uh, I have to say that the, the submission that you just made is very much in line with, uh, I think, the whole panel's uh, thinking, thinking on this. As to the, the, the previous uh, intervention, uh, I would say, though, uh, although the panel's formal work will be uh, uh, to submit a report in, in, uh, in April or May, um, this is, of course, for all of us, not the end. It's just the beginning. We have a question for them. Yeah, please, sorry. Me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I am Renata Kino Ribeiro, MAG member from the IGF. And I would like to thank the HLPDC for accepting an invitation to come and participate on the main session, Human Rights, Gender and Youth Tomorrow. Madeleine McSherry, I don't know if she's here. She will participate, she's here. Hey, hi. So she will be speaking uh, at the main session. It took us quite a while to get this arranged, but it's important that the panel is open to these dialogues and uh, the IGF has so many intersessional activities. The BPF gender uh, could also use uh, some dialogue and, uh, and uh, the others, the DC gender as well. Um, sessions which are coming up, which I'm mostly uh, involved in. But uh, yeah, I would just like to thank that, and I think this is a way to go. Um, creating dialogues should be not only on the events, on the on-site events, but on the online uh, work that the IGF does, which is all year long, such as the HLPDC discussions continue online uh, for a period of time. Thank you. Thank you, Romina. Yep. Nanjira, um, that's always, always uh, difficult with the uh, remote participants. We don't see you in the room, but please uh, join us with your comments. Sure, and I actually do want to notify the room that there are some remote comments that I do see that should be brought into plenary. But I think to um, the points that was raised, whether it's from values, principles, modalities, and all that, if you think about these as the what, the question is the how. And this is really, I think, where we're trying to bring in a new perspective. 
What has worked, for instance, in embedding the idea of transparency in any other domain? What has worked in trying to enforce certain principles and values? I think we're really trying to draw from those insights as we call them illustrative action areas to show how they can be translated to the space of digital. I think uh, many in the room will agree that we are not we're not keen for yet another rearticulation of what has been said, and particularly when it comes to the topic of human rights and human agency. I personally am very interested in seeing examples and stories from all sectors around how these topics have been mainstreamed and how enforcement can, has, or could be done. Thank you, Nanjira, for highlighting the how aspect. Cathy, would you like to? Uh, well, and and Nigeria, uh, since I don't know who is the remote moderator in the room, do we have remote moderator in the room? Uh, okay, that would be great to hear your that's, comments. And then that's Kathy, exactly yeah. the point. I'm not the moderator. I don't know where he is or where she is, but I can, put, I can ask the question. So the question is from uh, Mokaberi. So how digital cooperation is possible without digital trust in international level? The greatest enemy of digital cooperation and internet of trust is digital unilateralism and digital protectionism. With this approach that is clearly reflected in US national cyber strategy 2018, how other countries can trust us, US own and control internet, and what's the meaning of norm making? US unilateralism and nationalistic policy will soon lead to internet fragmentation and what must be done. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think that the question of trust is one of the underlying issues uh, behind the discussion of digital cooperation. Secretary General uh, highlighted the uh, problem of deficit of trust in his uh, speech at the UN General Assembly and we will be focusing in the, on the track on digital uh, security and uh, trust, but also in all other activities and the conversation that we are having today, engagement with communities worldwide, are the ways how to build the trust. Um, there is no magic in building the trust. It's a question of uh, fair, open, engaging uh, relations, listening, uh, listening uh, carefully to the, to the inputs, following on the inputs. As I indicated, this question, have your say, is, could be contra-productive contra, um, uh, if we don't uh, do something with your say. Therefore, those are small building blocks that the panel plans uh, to, uh, to uh, use in order to build the trust in, the, in our modus operandi and, of course, to contribute to the building a wider trust in uh, digital cooperation uh, by involving different communities and stakeholders. Uh, yeah, maybe I can uh, just make a comment about the, um, uh, going back to Nigeria's point um, before mentioning trust. There is, uh, so the principles that you, you mentioned were excellent and one of the issues that I think is personally is a bit of an issue is we have potentially very good examples of where those things have worked, but I think there's very poor dissemination of those across a lot of the digital community. So if you talk to developers or very large scale companies, quite often they are even oblivious to the human rights um, declaration. So you know, working out a ways of how we can communicate and get more inclusion from them as well in those discussions would be extremely useful. Um, and then, um, as re regards in trust, yes, um, it's uh, an extremely important point. And I think that, um, Giovanni, you made the important point that it's actually more about people than it is about the technology. So if we... It's great you know, to hear from blockchain experts. Is, well, yeah, I mean, blockchain... Well, we can talk about that another time, but uh, I don't think it creates trust as such. But yeah, it's all about the people. Thank you. Okay, Nanjira, any comment from your side? Good. Um, I mean, again, these are, uh, the reality is we are contending with technological realities against very complex political contexts. Um, I've always asked, what are there hacks? Are there technical hacks to political will? <laughs> and this, I think the answer is not. So really, these are the questions. I don't think that uh, we are going to try and postulate that we will have the answers, but we are positing these questions because we do want to hear from everyone on whether even at hyper-local levels there are promises or uh, stories of change and hope and promise in having these things not just be articulated but being enforced. Any other 
comment or question? It seems that we, we explained uh, quite well what uh, the main aims of the panel and how we are going to, to move uh, forward. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, to your inputs, your comments, your suggestions, and um, I will uh, pass, pass the floor for a few concluding remarks from the, from the panelists. Uh, and with that, uh, I would like to invite you to join us to consult uh, with uh, Madeline here, uh, Claire, our colleague from the, from the Secretariat and uh, to find and ways and means to involve your local, your communities, your universities, um, um, government departments, civil society organizations in, uh, in this discussion. Nikolai, please. Well, uh, thank you, Jovan. And re returning to my, my original topic uh, that I mentioned in my introduction, uh, we would really like your inputs on the digital public goods agenda. So please uh, uh, do reach out if you have ideas uh, and inputs to that process. I believe that can be um, truly uh, a, a huge contribution to the transformational change that is needed in order for us in common to, to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, the input that we have gotten today, I think it's, uh, it's uh, the values and principles that, that we base our work on is going to be important uh, and um, we, um, we value the, the input that we have gotten on, on those things today. And also I would like to say that uh, the broad consultations that we're doing now is also an important part of the process of reaching something that can truly be useful um, in the other end. So. Um, um, there is, as uh, Jovan mentioned, there is a timeline uh, at the end of the month to, uh, um, on the 30th of, of November to, uh, to submit your, your inputs and uh, please do so because uh, it will definitely be an important part of our uh, work going forward. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola Cati, please. Sure. Um, yep, uh, just to reiterate, we'd be very uh, welcoming of any input from yourselves around uh, good examples of digital cooperation. Um, personally, I'd also be very interested in examples where you think it has failed, because uh, quite often we can learn just as much as from failure as we can from success. Uh, and uh, if the, those of you who have input regarding the integration of um, sort of more human aspects into data, I'd be very interested to um, take some of those discussions as well. Thank you. And Gira? Thank you, Cathy. Yeah, I think, I think just um, emphasizing again what Minister Ostrup and Cathy have said. We, um, I'll just say by example, for instance, I'm joining in virtually from Cape Town where I've come to see whether these topics are even coming up in the heart of African tech communities, whether it's, so there's a lot of entrepreneurs and investors will be gathered here. And so also getting the perspectives of the people who are at the heart of creating these technologies is something I'm seeking. And we also encourage others to help with that kind of outreach. Um, I think the part of the panel's mandate on going beyond silos is something we could also use as much help in social this topic as possible uh, by going into sectors and spaces that we typically would not naturally align with. Thank you. Nanjira, while, while you're discussing uh, topics in the different sessions and the open forum during the next three days, uh, please try to reflect on this three question. What would be the values that we should aspire to in discussing, for example, artificial intelligence, ethics, those are issues which are highly present at the IGF agenda. Uh, what are the principles that should guide the digital cooperation and what are the practical mechanisms that could be, could be used for digital cooperation? It will be reported by the session organizers, as Cengeta indicated, and it will be included into the input from the IGF in the panel's deliberation. Um, have your say. Uh, we need, to, uh, we need to, to hear your ideas and, uh, and suggestions and what we can ensure that they will be uh, treated properly with utmost um, dedication and uh, utmost uh, care with the necessary feedback. Thank you very much for finding um, uh, time to join us today. And we're looking forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing you soon. All the best. Thank you.